Brother Danny was preaching this morning. There were some scriptures and stuff that he was touching on. And it was really blessed. A while back when I first got into the ministry, Danny and I was standing out in the parking lot. And naturally, I was scared. You know, I didn't know really what was going on. Danny said, just grab a, grab a, a chapter and just go down and preach it. You know, just do it like that. Well, I've had a hard time doing that. And the Lord laid the, some scripture on my heart here a while back. And, well, several months. And I kept thinking, well, when will I ever preach this? Well, maybe I'm not supposed to preach it. Well, maybe it's not just for me. But today, when we left the parking lot, Jane said, what are you going to preach on tonight? I said, Ephesians chapter 4. Now's the time. Because mm -hmm. it had some things in there. And how many of you just feel like you've been in prison for about the last two months? You know what I mean? Yeah. Well, we have. <laughs> but even so, Ephesians chapter 4, and about the first three chapters of Ephesians, Paul's telling them about their spiritual blessings. They're so blessed in what they have, but yet they don't realize how, those, how much those spiritual blessings mean to them. And he goes on in chapter 4 to tell them kind of how to walk those out. And in chapter 4, and verse 1, it says, I therefore, the prisoner of the Lord, beseech you that you walk worthy of the vocation wherein you are called. So what, what is Paul really saying here? I, I, I broke this scripture down, and what Paul is really saying is, he's not actually a physical prisoner. What he's saying is, he, the Lord has captured his heart. Amen. He's captured his every being inside of him. He doesn't want no more of the world. He wants to preach the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. That's what, that's what that is, he's saying to him. And then he goes on to say, I beseech you, brethren. And that word beseech means this is urgent. I need you to hear me. I need you to get this. And he went on to say that to walk, walk worthy in the vocation wherein you're called. A vocation is uh, like a vocational job. It's something that needs to be done with great dedication and, and put a lot of time and effort in it. And so what he's saying is the Lord has captured my heart and I need you to hear me. This is urgent and I need you to walk diligently in what I have called you to do. Amen. Whatever I've called you to do, walk there in it and do it diligently. That's what, that's what Paul is telling them. Then he goes on to verse 2. He says, with all holiness and meekness, with long suffering, forbearing one another in love. Amen. What is that again? In love. Without love, we have not the Father. Amen. We don't love our brothers and sisters, we have not the Father. Amen. How many times do you hear it said, I love them, but I want them to stay way over there. Yeah. That's not love. No. You have to love Kim Jong Un the same as we love everybody else. They are masterpieces of God. Amen. He created them the same as He created us. So He goes on now. Loneliness simply means to walk in a non-prideful, uh, humble mind sort of way. And all meekness, meekness is a quality of being able to be quiet, being able to be gentle, being able to be patient, and being able to be obedient to the Word. And then he goes on with long-suffering, Forbearing one another in love. Amen. Forbearing one another in love takes a great, a, a great dedication to Christ. You have to let Christ in your heart in order to really know what love is. Love comes from the Father. The Amen. Father is love. And instead of Amen. people getting upset with people that are, say, Ralph's been in church two days and I'm expecting him to act like a 15-year veteran as a Christian... And I go back there and say, now Ralph, you can't do this. Well, Ralph has no idea because we're at two different places in our faith. So if we're forbearing each other in love, we have
have to learn to be patient with where he's at, with where Jane's at, with where Mike's at, with where we're all at different places with Christ. Amen. And I'm not using that as an excuse because some's been there for 20 years still dealing with the same thing that they started out with. Amen. You've got to grow in the Lord Jesus Christ. Endeavoring to keep the unity of the Spirit in the bonds of peace. We have to go to great... Uh, we have to want to accomplish this. We have to want to really want this. To keep the unity of love and of peace. Now if you would, let's turn over to Colossians 3. That's just to the right just a little bit. Colossians 3 and 3.14. I've never really preached like this, but I'm going to give it my best shot. Colossians 3 and verse 14 says, And above all these things, put on charity, which is the bond of perfectness. Mm -hmm. Danny touched on that perfectness this morning. Okay? When we go and we, we put on that bond of love, we put on charity. We love our brothers and sisters. We love, we love the people around us. We love our neighbor as we love ourselves. So we have to always be in love. Even though we've been locked down in prison, so to speak, we still have that unity. We still have that passion to serve the Lord Jesus Christ. We did it through YouTube. We did it through the, the Internet. We did it through live videos. We still have that desire and that passion to get the Word of God to the people that may not know Him. Okay, back to Ephesians 4. It says, There is one body and one spirit, even as you are called in one, the hope of the calling. If we turn to Romans 15, you don't have to turn there, I'll just, it's just one verse. Romans 12, chapter, or verse 5, and it says this, So we bring... So we, being many, are one in Christ Jesus, and every one is members of another. So we're all in this together. The same way that we're in all this lockdown together, we have been locked up, but we're still in Christ. We still are locked together in Christ. We each have a different purpose and a different plan. God has called Danny to preach. He's called Mike to do the things that he does around here. He's called Jamie to sing. He's called Elena to do the video. We all have a different calling and we step and walk in those callings which makes us one body and which makes us work in harmony with the Lord and the things that He wants us to do. There is only, because there is only one Lord and one faith in baptism, one God and the Father of all who is above all and through all and in you all. So if God is in us, we should be able to accomplish the unity. We should be able to accomplish the love and the peace that we need to have for those out there that are lost. We should be able to walk in that love wherever we go without getting mad and upset with people that don't know God the way we know God. But unto every one of us it is given grace according to the measure of the gifts of Christ. Wherefore he saith when he ascended up on the high he led the captivity captive and he gave gifts unto men. The gifts that he gives to men. That I want to, when he ascended into the lower parts of the earth. He that descended is the same also that ascended far above the heavens. That he might fill all things. To some he gave apostles. Some prophets. Some evangelists. Some pastors. And some teachers. For the perfecting of the saints, for the work of the ministry, for the edifying of the body of Christ. Amen. So we all have we all have different jobs in the church and in the ministry. We go we go through times when things get really hard, like through this lockdown. But God, even like Mike said, even though we was locked down and we couldn't do this, we couldn't do that. We were still one body hooked together in spirit. We still had the love and the peace in our hearts that we knew that the Lord Jesus Christ 
was at the right hand of the Father, that He was still in control of everything that's going on down here. And there's so many people that need that peace. You can get on Facebook. You can see them falling apart. And it's easy to get trapped up in that. I know. It's, it's easy to get trapped up in that. Okay, this is something here this morning that Danny touched on. It says, and I, I had this in red. We was going through this in Bible study. That's kind of when the scripture come to be. Till we all come in the unity of faith and of the knowledge of the Son of God unto a perfect man, unto the measure and stature of the fullness of Christ. We should continually, as Paul said in the first verse, we should continually be wanting to grow, be wanting to have more and more of Christ in our life, be wanting more of the Word, being able to walk out into a cold and dying world that knows not God, and to be able to deliver the message that Christ died for them and that He is their Savior. That we henceforth, that no more children tossed to and fro and carried about with every wind of doctrine. Stop right there. How many forms and fashions of doctrines, false doctrines, every kind of doctrine you want, it's on the internet. We need to take and stay in unity with Christ. Amen. We need to stay with the one true God, the Word of God. We need to stick to what this Holy Bible says. You know, there's, I call this, uh, there's so many people that get caught up in the side dishes of life, so to speak. And they take their eye off of the main dish. And the main dish of the book is the Lord Jesus Christ. He's the one that suffered the cross. He's the one that died the death for the forgiveness of our sins. But so many people get caught up, well, he smokes, he can't, we can't have anything to do with him. Or he dips, we can't have anything to do with him. Well, he has a beer every once in a while. But look at, look at a lot of these places that, that teach these false doctrines, and I'm going to use the Muslims. They are so unified, and, and, and they, they, they can be a force against the true God because they are so unified and they keep it together. You know, Billy Bob down the street here is walking down through here and he says, well, man, look at them Christians. That's all they do is fight. They're divided. There's 15 divisions of different churches and, and one believes one way and one believes the other. The Muslims, man, five times a day at this time they pray. They all believe this way and they all believe that way. That, that's one of the things that kind of hurts Christianity. And, and back here, Paul tells them that they need to be in unity with one another. You need to have the same game plan going on. You need to have the same, uh, you need to be in the same mindset, the same spirit, and to use those things for our good.
They don't even know who Jesus is, half of them. It's pitiful. It's a sad, sad place out there. And we as Christians need to take this word and unity and peace and love and go out there in the world and preach this gospel. That's what this gospel is for. From whom the whole body fitly joined together and compacted by that which every joint supplied, according to effectual works in the measures of every part, maketh increase of the body unto edifying of itself in love. Love knits everything together. The Bible says that love never fails. If we love one another and we walk with one another in love, what a powerful force does that say to the world? You know, there's so many people that don't know what true love is. They don't know about Jesus getting on a cross and laying down his life because he loved them so much. He loved them to die for them. And they don't know that. And it's up to you and I to try to take that message to them. This I say therefore, testify in the Lord that, that he henceforth walk not as the other Gentiles walk in the vanity of their mind. How much of that do we see in the world? Having the understanding darkened, being alienated from the life of God through ignorance that is in them because of the blindness of their hearts. How many hearts are deceived? from false doctrines, false teachings, things they see in the world, things that get off the internet, witchcraft, all kinds of things that deceive the heart. It's really, really a sad world out there. And it, it bears on my heart, and I know it bears on your heart. We all have loved ones. I've got one that it just drives me insane sometimes. There ain't no God. How can you say there's a God? There is a God. Look around you. Look at all the things that he's created and made. And when, you, when that's in your own family, that's hard. Especially when you love them so much. So we need to stay unified. We need to stay in love. Love never fails. And one of the reasons I believe that so much is because Jesus Christ got on the cross. He suffered a horrible death. Because he loved them. And if we take that love to those out there that are broken, the drug addicts, you know, and I'm going to say it, my son was on drugs really bad. And my wife said, how are we going to ever get through this? And I said, I'm just going to love him through it because God says love never fails. You know? yeah. So if we take this love to people in this world, we stay unified in the main dish, the Lord Jesus Christ, and we keep him at the front and the foremost. He said, if I be lifted up, I will draw all men unto me. What better way to show the world that very picture and the life that you walk on this earth? The very thing that Paul pointed out to them and telling them how to walk. If we do that, and we walk in that love, we walk in that peace, and we show them compassion, we show them love, that draws them to us. And in us, they should see the Lord Jesus Christ living inside our hearts. And I know it works because I've seen it in my own life. It took us two years to get him through that. But we loved him every step of the way. And God brought him through it. And he came to this church. Danny walked back there. He didn't know him from Joe. He knew he was our son, and that's about it. Danny picked his hands up and put his hands up like this. He said, You're going to do mighty things, son. And I knew right then what he was talking about. My spirit said to me, He's been through this drug thing. 
and he's going to help other people that's in the same situation. What's he doing right now, Jamie? There's a guy that he works with that's hooked on drugs real bad. Josh has been there for him every day, trying to walk him through it, trying to show him the love of Christ, trying to tell him about God. And this has been on my heart. If you and I, that are not even in that physical picture, we can send our prayers in our hearts to that young man. Because we got one there that is of us, that's loving him, that's showing him that this is not the way, son. And he talks to him about God. So before we leave tonight, I want to pray a special prayer for that young man. His name's Brian. His name's Brian Wright. And he's got a family, he's got kids. And he tells Josh, I don't want to do this. I don't want to do it, but I can't stop. And Josh has been through it. When you said that that night, Danny, I knew exactly what he was what he was going to do in life. He's out there just like I was. He's out there amongst all the heathens, cussing, screaming, hollering. He works construction. And I know exactly what he goes through. There's always that woman that wanted to hear about the Lord Jesus Christ. If we take our love to that world, we can change the world one person at a time. We can bring them to Christ. If we walk the way Paul told them to walk, we can change this world. And we need to change it a lot faster than what we think because the Lord Jesus Christ is not far away. I believe with all of my heart that He's very close. Amen. All the signs are there. I'm not going to say today, tomorrow, or tomorrow. So, with that being said, I think everybody in here knows the Lord. And I just want to ask Danny to come up here with me and pray. But I want you to remember one thing. Take one thing from this message. Walk in unity. Walk in unity. No matter where you're at, where we're at, pray in one accord. Danny called the other night. Ask us all to pray in one court. And I myself have seen things already changing. You. So if we just take our love I ain't done in our prayers and take that to the world, that's what we need to do. It's about love. It's about being humble. It's about being meek. It's about being responsive to what Jesus wants us to be. And we will. Lift Jesus up because they see Jesus in us. That's what brought me to the church. One man, I watched him live it. That brought me in like a man. So that's my prayer. Danny, if you would. One minute. He mentioned somebody saying there is no God. I don't have that kind of faith. I don't have enough faith to be an atheist. I tell you that right now. <laughs> that takes great faith, right? Too much proof. In your own righteousness. Remind me of a story, and it's a true story. In Whitney County, Kentucky, sawmill, above water, the, the guys built it above wood, and all in for paper wood. Anything to keep them holding down a regular job. No pastor down there was homeless. One guy at the sawmill trying to get him saved. He told him, I don't believe. That. I drank my liquor. I drank my moonshine. I don't do anything to hurt nobody. I just drink my moonshine. I go home. I work hard. I don't believe in God. So don't start that church stuff with me. So the guy keep talking to me as I told you. So one day he was working at the sawmill and something happened. He was an off air on there and he got ripped right through here. And his entrance was laying over on this side. His entrance was laying out. And he knew he was going to die. So they told him, said, just lay there and be still and don't worry. He said, we called the, the, the ambulance and 
him to come and get you. He said, no, you go get that preacher. So he goes down and they bring the pastor of the church up. He walked over to him and he leaned down and he said, what do you need? He said, I need you to pray for me. I don't want to die like this. He said, I thought you said you was an atheist. He said, preacher, that'll do to argue on. It won't do to die. So a lot of people that say that, it's just to get you off their back. So just like the preacher, preacher down there, if I told you his name, but you guys would know him. Some of you would. But just because that preacher went off somewhere and said, I'm not going to let him die the way that he is. I'm going to see that man turn to Christ. He was the only one in Whitney County, Kentucky, probably, that was praying for the Lord to save him outside his wife. And the Lord saved him out there while that pastor was praying for him. Then he lived. And then he lived. He didn't die when he was there. He still had some bad scarring. He had to go through a bunch of surgeries to get some stuff fixed up for him. But he lived through it. And he didn't die unsaved, I guarantee you. The, it was there in plain view for everybody to see when that man gave his heart to Christ. Now that's a man... It was at near death, and he gave his life to Christ. God pulled him out of the gutter at the same time he saved his soul. There's not an alcoholic in the world that's been saved that wouldn't pull out of that. I used to drink, I know. I was pulled out of that lifestyle. I used to do country music. Man, I traveled doing country music, and I had me involved doing the country music stuff. But the thing about it is, it didn't do, me nothing, do nothing for me but get me in fights. That's all it did. Fight somebody's people breaking my equipment or something, all that has ever happened, you know. And we got to do some traveling, got to have some fun. Hanging around the wrong kind of people. Because that wasn't where my heart was at. My heart was here. And I had to get it back in shape to get here. You know, once you get out there, it takes you a while to get back. You mean, first off, there's shame. You're ashamed that you left. And have to come back to God. And if you want the shame and didn't have to come back to God that way, you will be before you get back into the full force. You will be. Because there's a time when I was on my face before God and I said, God, I'm so sorry. I said, I know that you're probably never going to want to use me again. He said, get up and go preach. I called you. You get up and go preach. I said, I still love you, Lord. He said, I still love you too. Now go. Go. I ain't stopped. I ain't stopped. And I ain't planning to stop. I'll go and I'll preach. As long as I got Ricky Graves around to hold me up, to pray for me. <laughs> I got a lot of work for you, Ted. You can't go yet, buddy. <laughs> well, I tell you what, this is one, I can say this right now. I'm proud. Each year, because I really believe that I am on the right track, and I'm like different. I sure do. Now, I'd have questions about myself if I wasn't on the right way. If I wasn't in the right place, that I could give you godly wisdom, then I would back down from it and say, "Man, you got to get to somewhere else." But I really believe I can help him. He needs somebody that loves him and wants him to come into this thing with love in his heart for everybody in the church now. And everybody that's outside the church too because they all have a soul. This young man that, that, that they're talking about, I really believe they got to save him. I do. And there was a girl here, you might have known her, uh, enormous. Oh, yeah. Okay. She jumped off that bridge over there. She couldn't get free. She couldn't get free from this stuff, you know, in and out, in and out, in and out, trying to get free, trying to get free, losing kids, bringing kids back, losing again, you know. And finally, it just got to be more than she could handle and plunged off the bridge. Now, I'll tell you what, an 80-foot drop from here down to there, okay, wouldn't have what she felt if she went to hell. Amen. That fall going down. And what I'm worried about, what I'm worried about, is where did she go to spend eternity? That's the part that has my heart broke because I, we don't know. But the thing about it is, we can't stop that. When Ricky was preaching, he 
said, unity of the Spirit and unity of the faith. The book of Ephesians is the unity book. If you look in there, that's what it's teaching us, is to have unity with each other. And that unity is a bond in Christ. 